Hi, this is Dan from Kidesign, and in today's tutorial on Autodesk Tinkercad, we'll be looking at how to make basic 3D shapes, how to move them, scale them, adjust them, and then also how to align, hide, and lock shapes once you've made them. Now, Tinkercad has quite a particular way of actually creating designs. Um, unlike in many other programs in which you would start off with maybe sketching a shape or uh, creating lines and um, surfaces first, in this one pretty much all the modeling is done through 3D shapes which are then kind of carved out or intersected with other ones so that you create the shape that you uh, want. Now on the, the right you have a toolbar with all the basic shapes um, and modeling tools. Now if in, in, in case that's hidden you've got a little arrow here that uh, will let you show it or hide it. And as you can see, there are all these nice colorful basic shapes which you can use. Now let's start with just making a simple box in the middle of our design. Now you see when you position it, it will give you its corners um, in the, on the bottom. It will give you one uh, dot in the middle which will uh, allow you to modify its height. And it will give you um, also a little arrow to move it up and down and these arrows for rotation. So let me show you how you can use those to modify. So when you make your model it will uh, always be 20 by 20 by 20 millimeters and then you can drag the corners to modify it. So you can do that manually here. The other way of doing that, uh, of changing the size, is by just clicking on one of these corners and then clicking on the numbers um, next to the, the length and the width and changing those. So let's say typing in 30, clicking enter, typing in 10, clicking enter, and the same is for the height. If you click on that little dot in the middle, you can modify the height to be whatever you like. So one way is dragging, the other way is typing in here, and the third way is actually typing in this toolbox that appears uh, in the top right corner, where you can, again, either drag the sliders or manually write the exact length that you want and the exact width and height. The next thing are these arrows for moving and rotating. Now, if you just click anywhere on the uh, object on the shape and you drag it, it will move it left, right and um, front and back, so basically on the grid. And if you drag this arrow here, it will change the height. The useful thing is it comes up with this uh, little dimension tool here, which shows you exactly how much you're moving. So as soon as you start moving, it will say it's moving 12, 13, 14 millimeters from the ground up. So it's quite useful uh, to, for being precise. And the rotation tools work in a fairly similar way where you either drag it manually or you click on the little box and you type in, I want to rotate it 45 degrees and here it is. And the same applies for any other directions. So you've got obviously three uh, directions you can rotate it in along the X, Y axis and the Z. So that's the basics of creating a shape, changing its size and uh, moving it around. Now you will notice that with some shapes when you make them, I'm just going to delete this one, um, to delete you select the shape, you'll see it's highlighted and then you click delete on your keyboard. Simple. When you actually position, when you actually place a shape on your grid, in this toolbox here, you can do some modifications. Apart from the size, when you're creating a box, it will allow you to add a radius to its corners. It's basically what's called a fillet in some other uh, programs. And again, you can make it smoother or just add a small one. Um, the little downside of this is that it adds a fillet on all sides. So you can 
either do it on all or on none. You can change its color, or you can turn it into a hole. Now, I will explain a bit later how the, uh, the thing about holes work and how you would use that. It's a very important part of Tinkercad because that's pretty much the only way you will be creating uh, bespoke shapes. So with others, you will notice that these, with other shapes, you will notice that the uh, options will change. So um, a cylinder, you can change the amount of sides, so you make it smoother or rougher. You can add a bevel, which is also called a chamfer in other programs. And you can also add segments, so it's kind of making it smoother. That's where it becomes more like a fillet. And again, it does it on both sides, top and bottom. If you make a pyramid, it will only allow you to change the number of sides. So you can make three-sided pyramid, four, five, uh, and up to higher numbers. If you make something called a roof, you don't have anything to change, uh, as you can see here. So you have to really try out all of the shapes um, from this menu to understand what you can do. For example, we figured that um, if you want to make a pyramid with a, a blunt top, so basically with a cutoff, you wouldn't be able to do that in a pyramid, but somehow you would be, do, be able to do it with a cone, ironically. You wouldn't expect that, but that's why it's really important to test out all of these modifications. So basically, if you create a cone and you reduce the number of sides, to 4, which is now essentially a pyramid, you can change the top radius and the base radius, and you end up with a pyramid with a chopped off top. You can modify the height. So there we are. You wouldn't expect that in an option called cone, but hey, there it is. Um, other sphere. Again, it um, can do more or less steps. So again, this is not a shape I would be expecting to make using a sphere, but there you are. Uh, polygons, you can change the number of sides. You can make, uh, again, anything from a triangular-based uh, box shape, pentagon, hexagon, etc. And other shapes that um, you can try and test. Now, tube is another useful one, which allows you to make quite a precise mm, precise shape by changing the radius, by changing the thickness of the wall, so basically the inner radius, number of sides, you can add a bevel, add segments of the bevel to make it a bit more round, so you can really make it as, um, as you wish. So those are um, some of the kind of tips and tricks on making basic shapes. And I wanted to show you a few other things of how do you um, add shapes to your design. So let's just get rid of all of them. I'm going to do that by dragging my mouse, clicking in the top right, dragging my mouse over them. Um, so they're all selected and I click delete. Now, if I've got a box, and I want to create something on top of this box. If I drag a cylinder around, it will always snap it to the work plane. So if I want to create something on the top, I need to move my work plane. And luckily in Tinkercad, it's very easy to do. You've got a work plane option here, which you click and you drag your mouse over your object. So you can place the work plane on its side, on its so top, etc. So let's place it on the top. Now if you change the view, you can see that the work plane has suddenly moved up and it's become yellow to actually show you that you're not working on the base of your um, design, you're working on uh, a work plane which is, let's say, irregular. So we can add a cylinder now 
and it will position it on that level. So we can easily make it on top here. If I want to go back to my original work plane, I click the work plane option, and as soon as it becomes bluish, when I move my mouse around, it means it will go back to the original view. If I go on top of the cylinder, it will move it to the top here. So I need it to be blue, and I can instantly see this. So now that cylinder is on the top of the box, and my work plane is back to the original ba uh, base. Now a few other things. Um, if that cylinder was on the, a bit on the side like that, and I want to align them, instead of trying to do that manually, which can sometimes be hard, especially with uh, more precise objects, I can select both of them, and I have a very useful tool here called Align. So if I click on that, it will give me a bunch of dots around. Now these dots basically mean if I click any of them, it will align it along that line. So this one here, for example, will align it along this line. This one here will align it along this line. If I want to align them along this middle, so basically put one into another, it's there. So now they're completely aligned, so I can't really do any other alignments. If I want to go back, you can use Control Z or Command Z if you're a Mac user, and you can go back as many steps as you like. Same, you can use the tools up here, which are undo and redo in the top left corner. Now, what if I want to copy a shape? It's very simple. Click on the shape you want to copy, and you can click Control C, Control V, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and then I've got the same shape copy, or even a simpler you click on the shape and you click Control D, which is duplicate. So one click less, basically. Now duplicating has some very useful um, options here, and I'm going to do a tutorial on that separately. Uh, basically, how do you duplicate to make patterns? A few other things about shapes. If you select any of the shapes, you can lock it. You've got an option here in the pop-up toolbox. If you lock it, it means that you won't be able to accidentally drag it or select it. But if you click on it and click the little lock sign again, it will unlock it. And the other one is the light bulb, which allows you to hide it. So you hide any objects that you they're perhaps in your way when you're modeling something else. And then simply you've got this bigger light bulb up here. If you click on that, it will show them all uh, again. It will bring them back into view. So those two can be quite useful when you're doing more complex models with more objects and they're in your way when you want to do some more uh, modification. So thanks for watching and please continue to the next tutorial.